Hi, uh, this is the uh, second lecture in this module on deterioration of uh, cementitious system. In this we will focus on uh, shrinkage and creep. Uh, this is just an outline of uh, this module. The, so, we will focus mainly on shrinkage and creep in this particular uh, lecture. Uh, what is uh, shrinkage uh, and what is creep? So, these are basically the uh, time dependent strains that are caused by similar or same internal processes which involve movement of water within the concrete. <laughs> and uh, let us see what is shrinkage and what is creep separately. In the case of shrinkage, this movement of water is happening uh, due to the environmental conditions and which induces strain in the concrete or volumetric change and then it effectively leads to shrinkage. And then in the case of creep, it is mainly because of the load applied or the stress generated uh, in the concrete. And, uh, and uh, one thing to note here is that both the creep strain and the shrinkage strain are not fully recoverable when the uh, load is removed or when the uh, concrete is resaturated respectively. Uh, so, it, uh, once the creep and shrinkage happens, you it is very difficult to regain the uh, original uh, st I mean uh, to uh, recover the uh, strain which is caused. <coughs> or the, uh, now, uh, this graph here it shows uh, two uh, you know both the creep and shrinkage uh, behavior. As you can see, uh, I have put this red box at the bottom which indicates uh, the creep, uh, you know the reason for creep, creep which is loading and then for creep recovery, we uh, when we unload, we can see the creep recovery and in the case of uh, shrinkage, which is the blue box at the bottom, uh, the loading is essentially the drying and the unloading is essentially resaturation. So, you can see here the free shrinkage curve which is this and uh, when the uh, uh, resaturation happens, whatever the strain gain, you know we are able to re uh, recover some of it, but not fully. Okay? And in the case of creep, uh, in the beginning as soon as the load is applied, there is an elastic strain over there and then after that you have this creep strain and then when at this point when the unloading starts, you recover some of the uh, creep, uh, creep strain, but not fully. So, you have something which is not yet I mean uh, not uh, recovered. Now, if you look at the uh, sum of these two, you can see here this is that graph where this much strain is not recovered even after resaturation or and unloading. Now, and that is the reason why uh, it is uh, very much important to uh, consider the shriek, shrinkage and creep behavior, especially when we talk about large uh, structures uh, where the uh, absolute uh, deformation, uh, the uh, deformation due to this strain could be very large in some of the structural elements. Now, combined effect of shrinkage and creep, uh, shrinkage uh, because it is very difficult to separate them because as I mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, they are due to same internal processes and it is uh, uh, for experimental purpose probably we can, but in the real structures both happen at the same time. So, it is very difficult to uh, separate them and it is uh, to see the effect of individual either shrinkage or creep. Now, shrinkage can occur in elements that are restrained uh, and develop tensile stresses. Uh, one example is pavements and slab slabs on grade. As you can see here in this picture, you have a lot of parallel cracks here which are essentially the uh, shrinkage cracks. And then in the second photograph which where you see a very large bridge uh, with uh, very tall piers and long span girders, you can significant you can have uh, significant uh, effects due to shrinkage and those effects could be in the form of uh, compression of the columns or even uh, on the uh, uh, girders, they could have significant def deflection, especially if they have pre-stress concrete girders and the concrete scrape I mean, resistance is not very high, 
then what will happen is eventually the because of the pre stressing forces uh, the concrete can uh, creep and the length of the girder could reduce and which will uh, result in the loss of pre stress uh, which eventually will lead to significant uh, deflection. So, these are very important phenomenon F, uh, F uh, phenomena especially when we talk about long span and large structures and where can various types of shrinkage occur. This is just one image which shows different type uh, different for, uh, types of shrinkage which could happen uh, in you know in a bit different uh, elements of uh, structures where you can see a drying shrinkage on th this parapet here and subsidence and then plastic shrinkage and restraint thermal uh, and drying shrinkage combination um, and uh, you know you can structural cracks. So, anyway this is just showing uh, different types of cracks which could form on uh, concrete structures. And uh, what are the different uh, types of shrinkage and when do they actually occur? Let us say this plastic shrinkage, thermal shrinkage, autogenous shrinkage, drying shrinkage and carbonation shrinkage. These are the five different types of uh, shrinkage which we will discuss in this lecture and when do they occur? Mainly if you are talking about plastic shrinkage, it happens in the first few hours and then thermal shrinkage right after the final setting and you can uh, start seeing thermal shrinkage and then autogenous shrinkage in the first few weeks and then drying and carbonation shrinkage as uh, uh, it happens in the uh, long run or long term process. Whereas, carbonation shrinkage might take much longer than all the other uh, four. Now, what are these uh, type of uh, you know five or what is the cause for these? Plastic shrinkage is mainly happening because of the loss of water when the concrete is still in plastic state. That means, it is still a fresh concrete and thermal contraction or uh, thermal shrinkage happens when there is a decrease in temperature especially after the setting and autogenous shrinkage is mainly because of the chemical shrinkage and the self desiccation which could happen in the first few weeks uh, you know from days to weeks uh, that time of uh, uh, th that period. And drying shrinkage it is mainly due to the loss of water in the when the conc uh, after the concrete already uh, has hardened and loose loss of water basically due to the drying of the hardened uh, concrete. And carbonation shrinkage, it is mainly because of the reaction of the cement paste with the carbon dioxide in the presence of moisture and which leads to uh, you know uh, uh, calcium carbonate which gets uh, precipitated in the uh, space available within the concrete and even free space uh, available within the concrete which eventually leads to uh, shrinkage. Now, uh, before we uh, talk about uh, shrinkage, uh, there is one type of crack which is not because of the shrinkage, but because of the settlement of crack uh, concrete um, during the fresh state. So, or in the plastic state. So, it is mainly my main thing it is not due to shrinkage, but I just wanted to cover this aspect also. As you can see, here on the picture on the top left or let us say the, the two photograph shows how it is manifested as you can see they, ha they are actually forming right uh, you know above the rebars here also you can kind of see a pattern which is uh, parallel to the or right above the uh, reinforcement. Now, how is it happening which is shown on the picture on uh, sketch on the left side you can see these white circles which are the reinforcements and then the bleed water from the bottom of the slab moves upward and moves upward and what happens is uh, the concrete which is uh, on this side and this on either side of the reinforcement it starts settling and uh, but the concrete right above the reinforcement it gets obstructed by the reinforcement and it does not get a chance to settle vertically down, but there could be some horizontal movement 
and some horizontal movement which also leads to a crack um, on right above the uh, uh, reinforcement. And this is depicted uh, very clearly in these two uh, photographs on the uh, right side. So, you can see this crack pattern which is very just above the uh, reinforcement. And if that is the case, maybe we have I mean the concrete has a lot of water than what it is required and lot of bleeding and that is why it is leading to uh, this kind of uh, settlement which is called either plastic settlement or subsidence. Now, this is plastic shrinkage cracking the first type of shrinkage crack which we discussed and you can see here uh, very clearly parallel cracks and uh, it is on slab on grade and uh, this is another example of plastic shrinkage cracking where you can see again a slab on grade uh, where you can see here slight crack at the top mainly more crack cracking at the top and less as you go down. Now, why this is happening or the mechanism is uh, clearly seen again on the photograph from the se second photograph where you see this crack happening here. This is the crack and you have more crack width at the top and as you go down the crack width is less. Why I am showing this cylinder photograph here is this picture on the right end is actually a cut section of a cylinder which is scored from the uh, slab. So, you can see the top of the slab has more crack width than the bottom. Now, what is the mechanism? Especially these kind of uh, crack happen when the uh, you know the uh, pathways for the bleed water to come upward is blocked which happens when uh, you know the cement is uh, let us say for example, if it is having silica fume they actually block or clog all the pathways and it prevents the bleed water from coming upward and at the same time if there is sufficient wind or the you know surface uh, of the concrete is relatively dry the air ambient air I mean it is a dry environment then you will have evaporation or loss of water from the top surface of the concrete but that does that does not get replenished uh, with the bleed water which is coming which is prevented uh, from uh, coming up. So, uh, multiple actions one is the surface water evaporates and then at the same time bleed water finds it difficult to move upward and then this condition creates a cracking or you know uh, leads to the formation of cracking especially when you do not have enough water available at the top surface. So, the top surface or near the uh, top surface it cracks more than the uh, uh, underneath. And this is another example of a roof structure where significant uh, shrinkage cracking um, uh, was observed. You can see the, the lot of cracks over here and then what this white patches which you are seeing is actually the water which uh, when, you know during the curing the uh, top surface of the same slab uh, water uh, because of the moist curing that water from the curing water actually seeps in and through this uh, cracks which are present and then they, they leaches out the you know salts are leaching out and then you can see this uh, white patch on this uh, surface. Sometimes you can even uh, see like long crystals being formed uh, through this crack and uh, one thing to note here is these are not structural crack because you can see very clearly that there is no particular shape for it and it is a, a through and through crack means from the top of the slab to the bottom of the slab the crack is um, you know continuous and that is why you see this uh, white patches uh, also forming. And uh, if it is uh, a roof slab then definitely you will have issues during the rain. So, uh, it has to be protected or the so treatment has to be done before you can go further. Now, how do we reduce plastic shrinkage? The first thing is the red, we have to reduce the rate of evaporation of water. How we can do that by decreasing the temperature of the concrete or by placing concrete as soon as it is mixed and providing adequate uh, curing. And if there is a wind conditions we have to ensure that the air movement right above the 
concrete surface is less uh, because if you have more air movement it will carry more and more uh, moisture from the uh, concrete and which will eventually lead to uh, fast drying which is not uh, recommended. And also we can go by reducing the amount of cement uh, or optimizing the paste volume especially by using supplementary cementitious materials like fly ash or slag or you know those kind of materials. And also uh, shrinkage reducing admixtures are available uh, which can also reduce the uh, you know the shrinkage uh, and then also uh, the uh, use of fibers is uh, uh, is also helpful in reducing plastic shrinkage cracking. You can see here this is an example of a concrete without fibers or plain concrete on the left side and on the right side with the addition of uh, fibers. Very clearly you can see the uh, concrete on the left side has significant cracking, the one on the right side has very uh, less cracking. And, uh, how do we uh, control uh, you know shrinkage or control cracking in concrete and look, look at the word we, I am talking here controlling the crack not preventing the cracking. So, you can see on the sketch uh, you know where we are providing or a saw cut if you have a concrete slab a very long uh, slab then uh, the as concrete shrink it will lead to cracking. So, it is very difficult to uh, prevent cracking in such case especially for a road or highway something like that or you know slabs as you see on this uh, pictures over here you can see people are making socket you know or in other words uh, once the concrete gains sufficient strength you cut the top surface of the concrete uh, like make a cut like that. Now essentially what you are doing is you are creating a section with smaller area that means when there is a particular uh, tensile stress generated what will happen is in the concrete will start cracking across that thinner section or here uh, right below the socket whatever the area available is less than the total cross sectional area of the slab because of the socket you are reducing the area available that means for the same force because the area is less you will have more stress and wherever the uh, stress is more concrete is going to crack there. So, essentially we are controlling the location or we are defining the crack location by doing this saw cutting. And uh, to prevent other uh, issues we should also ensure that the saw cut region is protected uh, because otherwise if there is a crack and if you have rebars going like this it might actually or it will rather corrode uh, right here. So, you have to protect this uh, socket or that joint also from uh, moisture. So, providing uh, a, you know a good sealant is always a good idea uh, in such cases. Now, this is uh, for an interior structure you can see here a, a slab large slab you have uh, saw cuts made uh, like this and which will ensure that the crack is right below those saw cuts and it is not forming uh, randomly on the uh, concrete surface. So, this sketch also shows similar thing some uh, typical plan uh, on how we can make contraction or construction joints and force the crack to happen right below uh, such joints or uh, such uh, sockets. Now, thermal shrinkage uh, it happens mainly in uh, thick members as you see on the picture on the top right I am showing a typical cross section of a retaining wall where you can see as you go down you have thicker and thicker uh, the thickness of the member increases as you go downward. Now, when you have this thick section at the bottom especially the uh, and it is essentially mass concrete and so there will be excessive heat generation at especially at the bottom portions and what will happen is the portion which is marked here like a hot region and then here maybe near the surface it is relatively cold because 
heat will dissipate into the environment from the uh, outer surface whereas the concrete inside or towards the right side in the sketch will still remain uh, at higher temperature. Now this differential temperature condition will lead to cracking as it is very clearly observed on the, uh, the bottom two images. You can see two retaining wall photographs where at the bottom portion of these retaining walls you are seeing cracking that is it is similar to this region. So, you can see here this portion is cracked and here also the bottom portion is what is uh, cracking. So, very clearly uh, you know this is due to differential temperature conditions. Now, it is not necessary that it happens uh, you know uh, uniformly everywhere on the structure and then Okay, before I go to the uh, next slide, uh, let me explain at what time and why this kind of crack also happens. One thing is excessive heat which we already discussed and now other thing is uh, when this heat generation and uh, you know it happens in the beginning, the plastic concrete expand uh, due to the high heat generation in the beginning and as concrete uh, you know cools down it tries to contract or shrink and because there is restraint uh, or in other words it is not a free shrinkage which is happening there are reinforcement in the concrete and also this concrete is resting on a uh, you know on earth uh, or some foundation and on the other side uh, the back fill is there. So, there is a lot of restraint provided by the uh, surrounding elements and also the concrete itself. If you look at the concrete which I showed in the picture which is marked as cold concrete, you can see the other concrete can also provide restraint to this uh, to this portion. So, effectively the uh, there are some region or the bottom portion of this uh, structures are restrained by uh, the other concrete and the foundation and which leads to uh, cracking. Okay and that is that is the main uh, mechanism. If there is no restraint then you will not see cracking, but you will see only shrinking, but most of the structures that is not the case. So, you have restraint. Now, this is just uh, a picture of a graph showing uh, how the modulus of elasticity builds up in concrete and how the temperature variations uh, uh, happen in the concrete. And as you can see here in the beginning until about this stage you have significant uh, a rise in temperature then as uh, time passes the concrete starts uh, cooling down. Now, this uh, uneven thermal loads uh, in bridge structures can actually lead to uh, cracking as you see in this picture. First look at the bottom portion of the picture which is indicating how the structure or the temperature conditions in the morning uh, could be. Uh, the top surface and bottom surface both the entire bridge structure could be of similar uh, could be experiencing similar temperature, but afternoon where you have you know if it is a really uh, hot climate uh, you will have the bot uh, the top surface of the concrete uh, bridge uh, might experience a higher temperature uh, something like more than 100 degree Fahrenheit whereas the bottom side uh, could be at low temperature. Now, uh, make sure uh, this is in uh, not in Celsius, uh, so please note that it is in Fahrenheit and now you see that at where the uh, concrete is uh, trying to uh, you know because of this change in the shape it induces some cracks like this. You can see at the bottom here wherever there is a flexure happening and the, uh, because of the shrinkage uh, or expansion of the top surface there is some kind of uh, buckling which is happening and which induces this type of uh, cracks. Now, this is demonstration of such cracks which is visible at the bottom of this bridge deck here. You can see some cracks. So, it is it's actually happens these kind of uh, damage mechanisms happen especially on large structures and which could later induce. Imagine in this particular bridge you have a crack there and there are actually reinforcement which goes like this in these cracks and when you have a crack definitely that rebar is going to experience localized corrosion right here. So, definitely these kind of uh, you know damages will 
lead to long term uh, you know performance issues. Now, this is an example to show if already there is a crack like I just mentioned earlier. So, sometimes again this temperature because of the temperature variations this crack might close open close open all that might happen. So, this particular example you can see on the top left image it is a newly cast concrete uh, with restraint on both sides. So, this side is also fixed, this side is also fixed, this side is also fixed. So, it, what will happen? Crack is formed when restraint drying shrinkage happens. So, this you can see the crack forming right almost at the center and on the right side image you can see if there is once the crack is formed if the there is a rise in the temperature this crack width decreases. So, comparing to the uh, you know second step here on the third case you have a reduction in the crack width because the concrete is going to expand or it is expanding. So, the concrete on the left and right side is expanding left and right is expanding and the crack is being closed. Now, what will happen if there is a reduction in the temperature? The same concrete will now move outward or in other words it is shrinking both left and right side concretes are going to shrink and then it is going to open the crack. Now, this is an example uh, of a, yeah this is another example depending on the position of the sun. So, if the sun is on this left side as you see here left side. So, this portion of the cooling tower will be at a experience at higher temperature than this portion. So, this is going to exp on the, the left side is going to expand that expansion will induce a change in the shape. So, the expansion on the left side will induce a change in the shape that means the entire cooling tower will you know slightly deviate from the circular shape to an elliptical shape. Likewise, you may also see if the sun moves to the other side uh, if it is on uh, right side like here again then the expansion will be on that right side of the uh, cooling tower. So, this essentially what it is showing is all the portions of a cooling tower could experience change uh, in uh, thermal loads which will induce the movements uh, or you know uh, shrinkage and it might lead to cracking etc. Uh, on this uh, the sub significant cracking could happen on these type of uh, structures. So, the hot side or the warmer side of the element will experience expansion which will lead to change in uh, shape. This is just bottom right side you can just see a typical power plant and why I put that is mainly to you know you see the this, this thing is basically the uh, water vapor which is coming through this. Uh, natural dra draft cooling towers. Very large structures and uh, you know very important structures especially for uh, pl power plants. Now, another shrinkage mechanism is autogenous shrinkage where uh, it is uh, typically a combination of chemical shrinkage and self desiccation two processes and main thing to note here is that this happens without any loss of moisture to the environment ok. There is no drying or anything like that happening, it is uh, happening uh, without any loss of moisture. Now, what is chemical shrinkage and what are what is self desiccation? Chemical shrinkage the name itself suggests it is due to some chemical reaction which uh, involves reactants and products of course and the reactants have volume which is less than sorry the reactants have volume which is more than that of the products how much about 8 to 12 percent. So, essentially the cement and water which are the reactants has uh, they have a combined volume which is about uh, which is larger than the uh, volume of the hydrates or in other words the cement hydration reaction tends to a reduction in the volume uh, by about 8 to 10 percent let us say 10 percentage uh, volume reduction. And uh, self desiccation is mainly when water is removed from the capillary pores, but not to outside the concrete system. In other words, 
the uh, uh, especially these kind of mechanism happen in low water cement ratio concrete where uh, you will still have some unhydrated cement left in the concrete. So, that is why here we are saying further hydration of cement or in a, you do not have sufficient uh, water available for the fully full hydration of the uh, cement system. So, uh, as and when it is available it will use. So, the, the water which is present in the capillary pores is also uh, used for this uh, hydration purpose and that lead to something called self desiccation. And here very clearly water is not lost to the environment, it is used by uh, the water from the pores are used for further, further hydration of the cement paste. Now, in concrete what happens is autogenous shrinkage, uh, you know when you talk about cement that is different, when you talk about concrete there is a major ingredient which is aggregate. So, about 75 percent or even more uh, 75 percent of the concrete might have coarse aggregate and then uh, or then you also have fine aggregate present in the concrete. Now, look at this picture here you have a lot of coarse aggregates and they are actually providing restraint uh, you know and which will also uh, you know restrict or in other words this because of this restraint. Uh, the uh, the overall shrinkage might still be uh, less. So the uh, you know the the magnitude of shrinkage in concrete could be about uh, you know significantly less than that in the cement paste. So one order of uh, magnitude or one tenth we can say. Uh, now this is just a schematic showing this volume reduction here on the left the bar on the left side you have the uh, volume of uh, unhydrated cement and water and the, on the right side you have paste after the final set. So, this is now this is the volume or uh, the final volume and so you have this much uh, shrinkage. Not that this is not to scale it is not that there is a 50 percent reduction in volume it is not like that because this looks almost 50 percent on the right side, but that is it is it's, uh, uh, not, uh, not drawn to scale. So, there is some chemical shrinkage and then autogenous shrinkage pre set and after set and then this is the uh, final uh, after the final set how much reduction uh, in accumulative voids are all shown here. So, we may basically all this uh, white circles on the third bar is accumulated uh, that particular volume is accumulated in this to show you what is the absolute volume of the uh, final products which is the grey uh, box here. Now, it increases when uh, the autogenous shrinkage increases when uh, the cement content is increased or when the fineness of the cement is increased or the concrete temperature is increased and also when you have C 3 and C 4 A F uh, you know content in the cement is increased. So, these are typically the reasons for increase in the uh, autogenous shrinkage. As you see here the picture uh, the graphs on the bottom you see a normal strength concrete and a high strength concrete. In the normal strength concrete this dark gray, gray region which is this is the autogenous shrinkage which is very less as compared to the gra dark gray region in the bottom graph. So, definitely in the high strength concrete we usually go for low water cement ratio and that eventually leads to uh, this autogenous uh, shrinkage significantly high uh, autogenous shrinkage. Now, what are the typical values? if you are talking about autogenous shrinkage strain it is about 40 micro strain in 1 month and about 100 in 5 years. So, it is it is what uh, most of this is happening in the very beginning ok almost 50 40 percent is happening in the first month itself. Now, if you are talking about a low water cement ratio concrete autogenous shrinkage is higher for example, the water cement ratio with 0.17 this is for experimental purpose uh, because we hardly use 0.17 water cement ratio concrete, but uh, you can see here uh, autogenous shrinkage with um, 700 micro strain has been 
uh, reported. Now, but in usually when you talk about concrete autogenous shrinkage is usually neglected or it is included as part of the drying shrinkage strain because of the difficulties uh, in the measurement or you know. So, total shrinkage is what is reported usually. Now, swelling concrete also uh, swells when it is exposed continuously to uh, water. So, the water exhibits an increase in uh, sorry, the, uh, the water gets into the concrete and then definitely there is a increase in the volume and mass. And why? Because it is absorption of water by the gel, CSO gel which pushes the gel particles further apart means uh, you know it the water gets absorbed and then it pushes so uh, and eventually the volume of the concrete itself increases. And Another mechanism is there is a decrease in the surface tension of the gel water that further increases the expansion. So, surface tension decreases and which leads to uh, expansion uh, eventually it leads to expansion of the uh, concrete. Now, what it could be? It could be in this range about 1300 micro strain after 100 days of submerged kill. So, significantly high a strain could be observed depending on the type of concrete, but this is sorry this is a cement paste when you talk about concrete it could be in this range. So, what uh, one thing to notice is when you look for numbers make sure that you are actually looking for numbers which are relevant for the concrete system which you are uh, using and not just for the uh, cement paste. Uh, this is an example uh, showing drying shrinkage of a slab uh, above an asphalt pavement. Actually, uh, the because of the asphalt pavement below the slab, the restraint provided by the pavement is relatively less, which leads to uh, this uh, you know type of shrinkage. And this is actually a slab which is about 40 feet long, and only one crack was uh, or is visible on this uh, slab. And uh, what you see here is a culvert here and this is actually on one side of the uh, culvert the slab is provided and uh, only one crack and the crack we could see that during the it is about the hardened uh, state and it's mainly removal of water due to exposure to unsaturated air. What it means is if you have a hardened concrete and the air right above the concrete surface is not having sufficient humidity or it is in a really a dry environment relatively dry or not completely uh, you know not really humid environment that is what mean by unsaturated condition. So, what will happen the water which is present inside the concrete will try to diffuse outward and get into the uh, environment outside or drying happens. And initially this removal of water does not cause much damage to the concrete. But as more and more water evaporates or as more and more uh, drying happens, the water which is present in the capillary pores, the water which is present in the capillary pores are also lost. And what this leads to is it forms a you know, menisci leading to the capillary stresses in the hydrated cement paste. Now, you will have uh, multiple locations this is happening multiple locations within the concrete this could happen. And as further humidity is lost, the uh, size of these menisci are reduced and when the size is reduced that means, you know uh, uh, the stresses are going to be more and more. So, as the size of the menisci is smaller, the larger will be the stresses generated which leads to cracking, shrinkage cracking and also this CSH structure eventually gets compacted that means, the entire concrete system uh, tends to shrinkage and which will lead to cracking because there are presence of uh, aggregates and uh, uh, rest other restraints which are provided by either the steel reinforcement or the uh, you know uh, surrounding uh, earth or wherever the, whatever the concrete is in contact with. So, or as long as there are restraints then this could lead to uh, cracking. If there is no restraint this could just lead to uh, shrinkage. Now, this uh, graph showing uh, drying shrinkage uh, at where the co three concretes 
all the three were cured uh, for 28 days moist cured or wet cured and you see here this is 50 percent 70 70 percent and 100 percent after 28 days of wet curing when the concrete was exposed to these three different humidity conditions we could see that very clearly the uh, you know uh, very clearly the uh, amount of shrinkage or drying shrinkage is uh, you know significantly high in case of a dry the most dry environment in this case which is 50 percent humidity about 1200 micro strain when the humidity was uh, about 70 percentage the stra the strain is only about 800 that is about uh, 30 percent reduction uh, 33 is around 30 percent reduction and then when you look at uh, 100 percent humid environment actually the uh, moisture from the air was absorbed by the uh, concrete and you can see or you know the uh, from the water was absorbed by the concrete and it actually leads to swelling this is actually case of swelling okay so uh, it's very clear that the ambient moisture condition or the humidity condition really plays a role in drying shrinkage now uh, drying shrinkage cracking in slabs with both sides exposed see the slab which I showed here this was slab on grade that means uh, the below or uh, the bottom side of the slab is not exposed it is in contact with the asphalt road at the bottom whereas there may be if you are talking about uh, a roof element or a bridge deck where the slab both sides of the slab are uh, exposed to uh, environment and uh, if this a particular example showing here it is uh, example from this uh, book uh, Peter Emmons uh, textbook you can see here it is a 20 feet long if the length of the element is 20 feet long and uh, the drying shrinkage if it is about 600 micro strains the shrinkage or the deformation or change in the axial length change in the length could be about uh, 0.15 uh, inches that is shown here this is the reduction in the length. Now if I convert that if it is an unrestrained concrete like there is no rest uh, both sides are not held together it, if it free shrinkage is allowed that the reduction will happen something like length change will happen something like that. But if it is restrained on this side also if the both the sides are of the concrete are restrained or held uh, then what will happen the crack will form at the almost at the center okay and so the same crack width but one crack will form at the center now if you provide a reinforcement as you see in this picture here there is a rebar which is going at the center right here then there is a additional restraint provided by the reinforcement and that will lead to multiple cracks like in this picture you see four cracks but the crack width of each of them is relatively less less than the 0.15 inch or 4 millimeter crack okay now this is an example uh, showing how the curling or warping of concrete uh, slab on grade happens like uh, a highway concrete highway or a concrete pavement you can see here two slabs one and two and there is a joint at the center. Now what will happen if the top surface uh, is relatively uh, you know if they in a dry environment the top surface will actually try to contract whereas the bottom surface I am talking about here the top surface contracts and whereas the bottom surface remains at the same length. So the moisture from the concrete is actually getting out and which leads to drying and shrinking of the uh, concrete and shrinking means this is going to contract here whereas the bottom portion is at similar uh, length so there is the effectively the slab the ends of the slab will get lifted up and if this happens on multiple slabs like this uh, as you see you can uh, uh, you can when you ride on this road you will feel the moment the wheel moves from one slab to the other you will feel 
uh, that you know the sound several kilometers if you have this kind of problems then definitely that will uh, need to be uh, you know taken care. Now, some of the factors which affect uh, drying shrinkage. See this is just an example to show in the second column here these are the cases where shrinkage is reduced and the case in the third column it shows where uh, more shrinkage was observed. But I would like to mention one thing that do not look at only one parameter for example, uh, you know if I say type 1, 2 cement it is going to have less shrinkage and type 3 it will have high shrinkage it is not like that the entire mixed design and you have to really look at the synergistic effects of various parameters must be considered while deciding whether which system will have uh, high or low shrinkage. But this table just gives you a rough idea of some factors which will affect uh, cement type definitely aggregate size also if you are going for smaller size aggregate you might have a higher shrinkage. If you go for a cement content large cement content like say 415 kg per meter cube instead of 325 you will definitely have more uh, you know you can have more shrinkage. See the cement is the uh, you know ingredient in concrete which leads to uh, shrinkage. So, if you can reduce the amount of cement in concrete definitely you can reduce the amount of uh, uh, shrinkage. And curing definitely if you go for a shorter curing here in this case 7 day and 3 days the 3 day case is experience, uh, exhibiting higher uh, shrinkage and uh, also the quality of the aggregate. So, all these factors must be looked at, uh, but synergistic effects must also be considered when you look at uh, shrinkage. Now, carbonation shrinkage is the last form of shrinkage we are going to discuss and this is uh, observed in some concretes where uh, in the very long run because after long time when the concrete undergoes carbonation then it leads to a products which are having uh, you know smaller volume or it leads to a shrinkage. Uh, what so let us look at the mechanism here the near surface concrete will undergo shrinkage due to the carbonation because that is the region which actually uh, you know car gets carbonated first and how is it happening? It is caused by dissolving of calcium hydroxide crystals and the deposition of calcium carbonate crystal in the space which is free from stress. So, you have calcium carbonate I mean this is the uh, you know product of this carbonation reaction between calcium hydroxide and calcium uh, carbon dioxide forming calcium carbonate and then they occupy spaces available within the concrete which are free from stress and eventually they lead to uh, shrinkage. Now, at what humidity level this can happen? As you see on the picture here uh, the uh, graph here you can see that the this is a humid relative humidity and this is the shrinkage. If in one case when the shrinkage was due to drying and subsequent carbonation then it let in it showed maximum uh, shrinkage. But if when it was simultaneous drying and carbonation slightly less shrinkage that is here and and then when it was only drying then it was significant it was further less. So, point to note here is at about 50 percent uh, shrinkage you have maximum uh, carbonation and that is the humidity level uh, you have maximum carbonation and probably maximum uh, shrinkage also which is due to the carbonation. Now, concrete can creep also and uh, deform uh, significant deformation can uh, be experienced. In this case here when you have a large span and heavy load you can see the size of this concrete I mean it is a lot of uh, dead load of this particular bridge is very high and this picture here as you see you have a dip at the bottom here. So, there is a significant there is a depression or uh, deflection at the center span which actually uh, is an indicator of significant creep because that deflection happened over a period of time and what the, the as a repair procedure they actually see here lifted up 
the center portion and provided uh, you know uh, mid span was raised a little bit and uh, uh, repaired so that vehicles could drive uh, without a dip on the uh, concrete. Observe. Now, these are some other examples uh, showing compression creep. You can see the two pictures on the top, one here have a very tall column uh, or a pier and this it is probably slightly less uh, tall than that and this is also slightly less and then here also you can see all these columns have different height. Now, why I am talking here is when you have these different heights the uh, deformation due to creep and these are very large structures. So, the dead loads it is or the loads acting on these columns are also very high. Now, the deformation or uh, due to the uh, deformation on each of these columns uh, due to creep if they are going to be different then uh, having a smooth ride on the uh, deck is not going to be possible because then there will be differential uh, settlement or the deck will not be at the same level. So, it is very important to make sure that the creep uh, effects are very minimal on these type of structural elements. In other words the tall uh, you know the uh, the tallest column here the deformation experienced by the tallest column and the shortest column should be maintained at similar uh, level otherwise you will have uneven riding surface which is not a good thing. Um, and also in the case of pre stress concrete uh, the because of the pre stressing forces the concrete experiences significant compression and uh, over a long period of time what will happen is because of this uh, compression the concrete will undergo creep and simultaneously as the concrete gets creeped or you know the length of the element decreases there is a significant loss in the pre stress which will then induce uh, deflection uh, of the uh, girder. So, there are long term uh, and uh, important uh, you know impacts of this creep uh, phenomenon. Here is another example of a flexural creep until now we were talking about uh, you know compression creep. Here you can see uh, an arch bridge which is now no more an arch uh, it is not really an arch almost flat at the center you can see here and the center span and other uh, places where flexural creep becomes very important uh, is uh, tunnel elements or because of the huge uh, heavy uh, load acting on the uh, tunnel segments for the entire life of the structure uh, the element, uh, segment or the concrete has to be uh, designed for uh, you know creep resistance. This is an example on this one is an example of a cut and cover section that cut and then cover means above this uh, this concrete over here you have significant uh, either a soil uh, or you know just a significant load is there. And here also it is another tunnel where again you will have significant uh, load on top of the tunnel and these tunnel linings I mean all this type of structures must be designed for uh, uh, or must be designed for uh, mostly these are all long. Uh, you know they are expected to last very long not just couple of decades, but much beyond that. So, the in the long term uh, how these struct type of structures will perform under uh, creep uh, must be studied before we decide it is not just the immediate structural performance long term performance must be looked at. Now, how we can test shrinkage and creep uh, this is just a similar graph as I showed in the very beginning. Uh, you can see here autogen this is on hardened concrete the first graph which I showed uh, was slightly different. So, you can see uh, autogenous shrinkage and then drying shrinkage strain here basic and drying creep and basic and basic uh, creep strain. Now, how do we check uh, test this mainly when you talk about the autogenous sh uh, shrinkage uh, or for uh, you know uh, basic creep you will we will seal the concrete with aluminum wraps uh, I will show that in the next slide. Whereas, when you talk about drying shrinkage or drying creep we test uh, you know exposed concrete element without covering them. You see the picture here 
uh, on the left two cylinders you can see one is an exposed cylinder this one and this is a sealed cylinder okay exposed cylinder and a sealed cylinder and we look at the uh, change in the length as time passes and then see where what is the uh, shrinkage one once it is sealed that is mainly for autogenous shrinkage which is exposed it is mainly for total or drying shrinkage and for restrained shrinkage test we uh, suggest to do this ring test where the steel ring which is the inside this grey portion here this one that steel ring provides the restraint and then concrete tends to crack uh, like this this uh, as you see on the sketch on the right side and then we look at how much is the crack width and how the pattern is and all that. For the creep test setup you see here uh, this is a typical creep test setup where you can see uh, concrete cylinders there are two cylinders here concrete cylinders this on the right side this is actually uh, sealed that is mainly to study the uh, basic creep whereas on the left side it is uh, exposed on uh, concrete specimen which is not sealed so you can study the uh, drying creep in this case and like i mentioned flexural creep is also very important so here is the test setup which we have in our lab where you can see uh, you know flexural creep uh, test setup where three concrete uh, beams beam specimens are kept one above the other you can see here one here second element here and the third one here three beams uh, just to look at the uh, flexural creep. Now in to summarize we looked at uh, creep and shrinkage and found that they are actually time dependent strains that involved movement of water and are not fully recoverable and different types of shrinkage mechanisms exist we looked at five different types and then restraint to shrinkage causes cracking in other words if there is no restraint there will be only shrinkage but no cracking but when concrete cracks it is uh, not something which is uh, good for the structure so we want to prevent cracking how do we prevent cracking maybe by using SEMs or low paste content or cement content and use of fibers and uh, definitely by adequate curing also shrinkage reducing admixtures can be used and uh, uh, shrinkage reducing as admixtures forgot to mention that in this bullet um, and cracking can be controlled not uh, eliminating cracking but by controlling uh, uh, cracking can be controlled by providing saw cuts at definite uh, distance uh, and then test methods for unrestrained shrinkage and restrained shrinkages are shrinkage are available and compression creep and flexural creep are also very important uh, usually we talk about compression creep but flexural creep are, is also uh, very important uh, when we talk about long span uh, structures especially uh, long span structures and uh, uh, tunnel elements uh, which are meant uh, to last for long uh, time or you know 100 plus years of life is expected in case of tunnel even uh, maybe more is expected thank you these are the references used for making this uh, particular presentation